everyone. So my name's Erin and you can find me on Instagram at Real Wig Fun. So my own hair is very thin, fine, and brittle. And when I think back to two years ago when I first started wearing wigs, my hair density had gotten extremely thin. It was at the thinnest point that it ever had been. And I have Crohn's disease. I was diagnosed when I was 18. And Crohn's disease, along with many of the medications that I've had to take along the way, as well as some surgeries that I've had along the way, have really done a number on my hair. So my favorite thing about wigs is certainly the confidence it gives me, that's number one. But number two, and probably the most important, is how easy it is. So I'm a busy mom, I have a full-time job, and I love the fact that I can do my hair literally in five seconds. So my bio hair is very thin, I dry it, make sure it's dry underneath, I pin it up in the back and I pop on my hair and I'm ready to go. I really love the flexibility of being a redhead one day and a blonde the next, or perhaps short hair one day, perhaps it's really hot outside and I want a shorter style that stays off my neck. But tonight I wanna to go out on a date night with my husband and I'd love some long blonde hair. And I can do that. And I love it. So one of the concerns that I had when I first considered wearing alternative hair was really, what is my family going to think? What are my friends going to think? How do I tell people that I work with? And I was very worried because I liked the idea of being able to change my hair from day to day and I knew that people were going to notice. So I thought, okay, do I struggle with that anxiety day in and day out as I show up looking differently than I did yesterday? Do I go through that every day or do I choose to just come out, so to speak? and share with my friends and family. And ultimately it's going to be a personal decision for everyone that is unique to them and what you feel comfortable in. But what felt right for me was to just get out there and share it. I am the type of personality in life where I'm just typically a straight shooter. And so I thought, why not approach this in the same way? So you know what? I got a number of my wigs that varied differently from each other and certainly from my bio hair. I took images of myself and I posted them on Facebook. And um, some may not feel comfortable to do it, but it was right for me. So in my post that I posted on Facebook, I said, I explained why I was starting to wear wigs. I said, please don't be surprised when you see me looking differently day in and day out. It's okay to talk to me about it. I'd love to talk to you about it. And what was incredible was the response that I got from friends, family, and coworkers. None of it was negative. I did not get one negative comment, um, even from my teenage boys, <laughs> who at first, to be honest, didn't quite understand this world. At this point now, they completely accept it and, you know, they enjoy seeing me coming out with different hairstyles, but that's a little bit about how I decided to sort of deal with that anxiety that I didn't want to deal with. And for me, that took it away and allowed me to move forward and enjoy alternative hair. Connecting with people online is so key, and I think it's a great point to consider that perhaps your friends and your family and your co-workers haven't lived in your space, meaning they don't understand wig wearing, um, so they may have perceptions. 
uh, certain perceptions that they can't add value back necessarily to you. But so by diving into the way community and gaining a support structure of other women and men that are going through similar struggles that you are going through can really be invaluable to you. I was, you know what, I was watching a live yesterday in fact, of two women that both have complete hair loss. And they were talking about just this topic, about the importance of connecting with other people that understand your reality. And for us within the wig community, this is normal. Um, but the wig community is also incredibly transparent about what the challenges that you may face with those that don't understand it. So the social side of it can support and give um, people new to wearing wigs, um, that connection and understanding and experiences that can help you along yours. The other benefit certainly of the social side of the wig community, especially when you're searching for wigs, you know what, you may go to an online wig retailer as an example and look at stock images of, you know, for example, Raquel Welch or Gabor Wigs or any other brand for that matter. And they may look a little bit differently than they from one on one person to the next. And by connecting with others in the social um, community, you can see those same wigs and same colors on different faces, different face shapes, different complexions. So that will give you an idea of whether that style will be great for you. I would encourage you to you know, connect with people that perhaps have similar face structure to yours. For example, a wig's gonna look different on somebody um, than myself that has a drastically different face shape. So for example, I'm seven inches from my hairline to my chin. This wig, which is Raquel Welch on point, is going to look very different on somebody that has, for example, a longer face than mine, which would be, let's say nine inches. It's going to look much shorter on that nine inch face than it does on my seven inch face. And these are all things that I learned when I dove into the social part of me social media on within that wig community that I perhaps would never have learned before. Okay, so when you first get that wig out of the box, um, you're likely going to put it straight on your head and go, oh. You know. The expectation is that we're going to put it on our head and it's going to look just like the images or just like, um, you know, the, the person you saw on Instagram. And that may not be the case immediately and likely it won't be the case immediately. So number one is give yourself some time to play around with the style and get used to it. Why don't I show you how I put my hair up and I can show you how to put the wig back on. So my hair personally is very, very thin. Your, your goal is to get, if you have bio hair, to get it laying as flat as possible on the back of your head. So if you can see this tiny little clip, that's what all of my hair goes into. So I simply take my hair, I twist it, I take that clip, I clip it down. There, my hair is up. And then I take my hair grip, I put it on the front. And one thing that I heard about a hair grip, which I love, is they described it as giving you a facelift, which is awesome. So when I pull back my hair grip here, this is what is going to secure my wig onto my head. So I have absolute confidence that this wig is going nowhere. All right, so I simply take my wig, I grab it at the nape of the neck, two fingers on either side, and the goal is I'm gonna put my forehead into the front of the lace and then simply pull the nape to the back, okay? So it's as easy as this. When I talk about my hair taking five seconds to get ready in the morning, this is why. So I'm putting my head in, pulling back. So now it looks a little bit crazy right? Because the hairline is way too far. So I'm going to take my ear tabs, which are on the side here, and just adjust it so that it is in line with where it makes sense. And one of the tips that I learned is four fingers from your eyebrows or where your eyebrows 
were or would be if you don't have any. And that's for, on average where somebody's hairline would naturally start. So there you go. I'm done and I'm ready to go. It's as easy as that. Feel free to make that wig your own. So for example, this is Raquel Welch on point, okay? It is a center part, but I can play around with the front of this and make this my own. So I don't necessarily need to wear it dead center. I can wear it off to the left. I can wear it a little bit off to the right. So find that style and styling of your wig that feels most like you. If I woke up with the perfect hair tomorrow morning, which would be a shock, let's just admit it, um, I would say absolutely, without a doubt, I would still be wearing wigs. And it goes back to the reason why I choose to wear them in the first place, which is they're easy. It allows me to get ready quickly and the flexibility to change my hair day in and day out. So I would not be getting rid of my wigs if I woke up with my dream hair tomorrow morning. So I think we all have days where we don't feel confident. Um, and perhaps over you know, the past few years, as we've all made our way through COVID, we've probably experienced those days more than we're happy to admit that we do. And for me personally, um, when I get in a funk, I won't necessarily get up every day and put my clothes on and put my makeup on and put my hair on. And when I start to string a couple of those days together and I'm not presenting myself as my best self, that's where I can start to get down. One thing that helps me is being fully transparent about that though on my page. So I will show up without my hair on. I will show up without my makeup on because at the end of the day, I think we're all people and we can relate to the days where we feel great and the days that we don't. For me personally, what helps to get me out of the funk is to decide I am going to take that 10, 15, 20 minutes and show up today. So I'm going to get dressed in clothes that make me feel good. I'm going to take five minutes to put on what I wear as Saint Makeup. And I'm going to put on my hair and the feeling of moving throughout the day when I've done that versus chosen not to is drastically different. So although these may be cosmetic things that we're talking about, it can really change how we feel and how we view our day, day in and day out. And I think that's huge. My advice, if you're starting out and you're, you're either considering wigs or you're new to wigs, a couple of things. Um, number one, I would encourage you to think back to a time where you loved your hair. Um, think back to the length it was, the color it was, the density it was, and try to find a wig that most looks like or resembles your hair when you had it, when you loved it the most. And the reason why I say that is the risk of choosing a wig that looks very different than what you are used to has a higher chance of it feeling not like you. So when I started out, my goal was I need to find a wig that looks most like me. And that minimized the chance of when I put it on my head, it felt from feeling very foreign, okay? And then as you start to get comfortable with wearing wigs, I would encourage you to consider different colors at that point, different styles. But number one, start out with something that you feel very comfortable in. Number two, dive into the wig community. Find people that are on social media that you trust, that you like their style, that are fully transparent and honest. So when you're watching the reviews, they're gonna tell you the things they love, but they're also gonna share with you the things they don't love so much. And that's really valuable. 
So my advice as far as shopping online is really to be aware um, of potential scammers. And unfortunately, that is a reality out there. So my advice to you is um, to reach out to the manufacturers. So for example, if you're looking at Raquel Welch or you're looking at Gabor, go to the Hair You Wear website and you'll see that there are listed retailers that are approved retailers, but you can also reach out to Hair You Wear Raquel Welch or Gabor as an example through their social media. And you can confirm that the sites that you're looking to purchase off of are legitimate um, sites. The other thing to watch out for are prices that are just too good to be true. Um, and you know what, you can probably tell that once you've done some shopping. So if they're too good to be true, they typically are. So we wanna make sure, or I wanna make sure certainly that your first experience of buying a wig is a positive one. So when shopping online, just be aware that you're shopping through a very reputable online source. I started my Instagram page about a year into my journey with wearing wigs. And the main motivation was really to be able to give back to some of the other ladies that I had followed within my first year that shared their tips and recommendations about uh, wearing wigs, what was important to know. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'd love to be able to share my experience with others that are struggling in the same way that I did. Um, and to be part of the community, really, that it helped me gain that confidence to explore wigs and start loving and talking about it. I would love it if you would follow. The reason why I started my page is really to normalize wearing alternative hair. So I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, concerns, I will absolutely get back to you. So whether you want to send me a direct message, um, please feel free to do so. And I look forward to hearing from you.